Cork are a team that when I was a young lad, I hated them. Probably because they beat Tipperary more often than, than I cared to remember. But um, I th- like it's it would tell you where Cork are at, that at this stage, that kind of feeling towards Cork has gone because it's just so long now since they won All-Ireland in 2005. Definitely they've had a few wins over Tipperary now, but I think at this stage, there's probably no massive fear from Tipperary's direction towards Cork. Um, just Kieran Kingston is back, and I think that that's generally been lauded. People are happy in, in from a Cork point of view anyway that he is back but just because they got close in that 2017 season you know that you can't just forget the 2016 season when they had some some bad losses losing to Wexford early exit from the championship all of that for Kingston now it's can he pick it up and show that 2018 was actually just a building block for him uh, or sorry 2017 that that was a building block and he was capable of more because I think even for some of those players, never mind Kingston, some of those players, and especially the, the much heralded young players, the five players that were mentioned so often, has their form kicked on since then? I don't think it has. And he's going to need to get more out of likes of Luke Mead, Darrell Fitzgibbon, obviously his fantastic talent, Mark Coleman, Colm Splann, is a, after being out injured for, for the last year, obviously you can't criticise that. He's going to be eased back in, which is a big one. And uh, there, there's, there's one other player that I'm forgetting off the top of my head also. But... It's a case for them that they're going to have to hit the ground, the ground running. Um, will there be much change to the team? Well, Daniel Kearney, he's left the panel. Um, so he's opted out. And I think in his past season, I saw someone uh, tweeting that he had, for seven of the last eight games under Kieran Kingston, he, he was out of the team. So perhaps he just doesn't fancy him. And perhaps uh, Kearney just decided, I know I'm not going to be kind of, kind of getting the same sort of hop that I got under John Myler. So maybe that's the reason he opted out. But, uh, yeah, those young players, they have to get up to the level. I think uh, Bill Cooper, I think it's an interesting one. I, I've always lauded Bill Cooper. He's not the most fashionable. He doesn't have the most, uh, he's not the most graceful style going, but he's obviously a warrior and a workhorse and a leader. He was at uh, centre-back during the Munster Hurling League at times. Don't know if that means he's going to stay there or that was a needs must scenario because of injuries. But he's a player I really like, and centre-back has been an issue for them, much like for Clare. Trying to find that that centre back, you know they've they've looked at Christopher Joyce, Tim O'Mahony, on Cadigan has worn number six in in previous times, um, and Mark Ellis also, is he the answer at centre back or do they actually need him at midfield? Um, midfield is one of the toughest positions to play. Obviously, I just mentioned that Daniel Kearney is gone, Darrell Fitzgibbon can play there. He's used at centre forward. Maybe maybe he's a wing forward, maybe brilliant there because of his pace carrying the ball. So for for Kingston, it's a big thing to actually nail down the the, the centre back slot for sure, and then also midfield, which I really do think is is a tough position to fill. Tim O'Mahony could be one of the players to go in there. I think he's he's clearly got a lot of talent, but uh, to get it out of him and find that settled position is going to be big for him. Um, the new players from the under twenties kind of look like, I mean, I could be proven wrong, but same versions of of what we've seen before. So it'll be interesting to see who steps up, uh, much like. Uh, Limerick and Laha or Galan at times I think it's got to be a case of stop having plan A, B and C getting the ball into Horgan because it makes you a little bit predictable and we saw what Kilkenny did in the second half of the All-Ireland quarter final last year they had two, their two wing backs just sit back and make sure they stay in front of where um, Alan Cadigan and Patrick Horgan were going to be receiving the ball it just became so predictable that uh, I just think everyone knew what they were going to do and it's it's probably if you're well tuned in tactically, you can set up to stop this Cork team. So how can they stop making it that obvious? What way can they develop their game? Is that a running game through the middle? They certainly have the pace, you know, Lahan, Fitzgibbon, uh, Luke Mead, you know, you can keep naming them. Um, definitely try and get as much ball as possible into Seamus Harnady too, because he's just a, a game winner. And um, I think they definitely need to be um, more ruthless. Because I was looking at their... Their, champ, their games in twenty in the 2019 season. If you take out Westmead, who are obviously aren't operating, uh, they, they came through to Joe McDonough, but they're obviously not operating at the Liam McCarthy level just now. So I'm going to take their result out of it when when Cork absolutely battered them, scoring 140. But if you look at the other games that Cork played and you convert goals to points, they conceded 34, 29, 36, 24, 33. So a total of 156 points, which is 31.2 points conceded per game. So obviously there's an issue in terms of like, fair enough, they're, they're setting their stall out to beat the other team, 
but you need to set up to, to stop other teams. And maybe there's a lack of backs. Maybe that is the problem. And maybe that's what Myler's going to have to find more than others, more than other things. Sorry, Kieran Kingston is going to have to find more than other things after Myler's uh, final season. Um, but definitely, it's, it's a case of being more ruthless and cynical. Having uh, Spillane back there, I think, is a big one, especially if he hits the ground running. But for Cork, um, just to see where they are in the pecking order in terms of the betting, they're currently fifth. So they're behind Tip, Limerick, Galway, Kilkenny and Cork. Uh, just a little bit ahead of Wexford and Clare. Is that where is that where you think they lie? I think Cork have the talent to do, it, but I just I just don't know if they'll put it together. Maybe there is just a lack of, of steel in the team. It's it's one of these things that's been said so often that until they disprove it, it feels like that is the case. So let me know where you think Cork are in the pecking order. Thanks for watching our game. Don't forget to like and share the videos and if you're new to the channel, hit subscribe.